This podcast is a presentation of Chapel Valley, a community church. More information from Chapel Valley can be found at www.chapelvalley.org. Well, it's nice to see you again. Today we're going to talk about what the Apostle Paul called spiritual things in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And specifically we'll cover the gifts of the Spirit. Paul gives us a list, which really isn't intended to be an exhaustive list list of the things that God can do through the church, but it is a list that he provides, and it's interesting to look at it, and so we'll do that today. And when we're done, there's really three questions we want to ask. Uh, number one is, when we are reluctant to minister, is it because we're protecting our reputation, or are we protecting God's? And then two... Is it possible to minister in the gifts of the Spirit and have it done so it looks natural? In other words, is it possible to actually bring ministry to somebody where they don't even know they're being ministered to other than they can really like it? And then the third question is, if number two is yes, then what would really be the risk of bringing ministry to another person? So those are the things we're going to look at and see how those gifts function and see that the Lord has really empowered his church to be his hands extended in this world. Thank you. We're going to talk about what is called the gifts of the Spirit. And I really want us to just find our comfort zone in this. In Acts 1.8 it reads, this is, what, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said these words to his church. And you shall receive power. Say the word power. Power. Okay, say it like power. It's a, one of those words that sounds like it feels. Say it. Power. Power. Yeah, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The power is to be a witness. To testify that Jesus is raised from the dead to give evidence that Jesus was who he says he was and is who he says he is. That he was the coming Lamb of God, he is the resurrected Lord, and we give witness to that. And it takes power, and we've been given power to do that. So, <clears throat> now we're going to go through the gifts, and I want to move it along. And So 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts. The word gifts is not there yet. He's really saying, now concerning spiritual things. Spiritual things. Brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. Uninformed. I, I, want, I don't want you to be unaware of what you've been equipped to do. If you don't know you have this equipment, you're never going to use it. So that's what he's saying. You know when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, in other words, there's many ways... That are, in, that are wrong, and I don't know which way you picked, but it was dumb. King James uses dumb idols. It was dumb, mute. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. In other words, how do you know a person's been born in the nature of God? Because their nature will testify to their allegiance. And if someone is saying Jesus is accursed, They've not, they don't have the Lord working in them. If someone says, Jesus is Lord, yeah, I really believe that. They've got the nature working in them. So that's who's in and, and on track with what God's going to do. This passage is not about gifts or the gifted at this point. It's in the sense that some have it, some don't. If I, I'm going to I'm going to give a limited amount of gifts at Christmas. Unless somebody helps me out. But otherwise, there's a limited amount of gifts I'm giving. And so some will get some gifts, some won't get some gifts. So you'll have the haves and the have-nots. We can often look at this passage as though there's the haves and the haves-nots. But, but I will give a gift to everybody in my family from me down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the rest I give Christmas wishes. <laughs> So as a parent, I will give gifts to my children's children's children. I will do that. They're all going to get a gift. They're not going to go without. They won't get the same gift. 
but they'll not go without. But it's a gift, and it's a gift from my heart, my observation of where they're at, and I'll try to pick something, have Kim go buy it, and we'll be good. <laughs> and I just want you to know, I have almost all their gifts bought already. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so the Apostle Paul is talking about spiritual matters, and then he moves in. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but the same God who empowers them all and everyone. So you really have a mention of the Trinity here and how they work. And the Apostle Paul is still talking about things. He hasn't gotten specifically into the manifestations or gifts of the Spirit. He, he's talking about spiritual dynamics, and there's dynamics in play. God has called you and has working in you uh, the Holy Spirit and that the, the, the Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father also have dynamics in the workings of things. And then he comes down and he says in verse 7, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So can you say for the common good? For the common good. It does you good, but it's not about you. It's about the good God is going to do through you. Now, God does a lot of good things that are about you. But when he's talking about these manifestations, they're through the body to others. For one, to one is given through the Spirit the word of wisdom. I'm going to briefly explain these in a moment. To another, the word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now listen to this last concluding thought. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. So you don't own a gift. You don't, the Lord gave me the gift of knowledge. That, that, is, that is not that gift. It is a message or a word. It's a portion of information, and it has a shelf life. God gives it, and I'm to deploy it, and then we're done. So the gift is not, I got this gift in my pocket, and I get to use it whenever I want. It's, I have the Holy Spirit in me, and whenever he wills to move upon someone's life and to move on them, he can help me help them in a supernatural way that is to feel very natural when it happens. So that's really what's going on there. So let's go through these gifts real quick. So we come to the first one. The word of wisdom. The reason I want to, I'm just going to give you a little bit. We can unpack these. It's, it's simple enough for a child to know, complicated enough. You could write a whole book on it and probably not get to the bottom of it. That's just the beauty of God and his scriptures. But let's just think of it like this. Word of wisdom. A word of wisdom is, is a piece of information that hasn't happened yet, but is, but is going to happen. F for instance, it really was a word of wisdom that the Lord gave Nate and Sarah about the name of their son. The son didn't exist yet. It was a piece of information. It was, the Lord didn't tell him he's going to be 19 and a half inches long, and uh, weigh nine pounds, six ounces, or whatever it was. The Lord didn't tell them that. The Lord told them the name. It was a word, a piece of information that was prior to the moment happening. I remember mowing the church lawn when we were at the old place, and I'm mowing, and, and uh, I'm just riding along, and just out of the blue, the, the, a word of knowledge came to me. Lou, Lou, this Lou, is pregnant, Lou is pregnant with a man-child. I'm like, a man-child, really? <laughs> but that's how it came. Lou is pregnant with a man-child. So I went up to Lou and I said, hey, the Lord told me you're pregnant and it's a boy. And she goes, yeah, we just found out. So that was a word of knowledge because it was information that was existing. It wasn't foretelling. It was telling what is. And then it was done. I didn't own it. The Lord hopefully used it for encouragement. Maybe he was encouraging me, but it was a deal. And it was that. That's a word, so a word of wisdom is a piece of information that has 
like uh, maybe the Lord could tell you or tell somebody for the common good. That So that was a word of wisdom. It's a piece of information that is not happened yet but is about to. And the reason I think it's that is wisdom has to do with taking a step now that ensures the outcome that I want. So it's, it's wise to save money. Why? Because I'm looking forward to a future event and I will get there appropriately. Information helps me. How do I need to correct my course or what's going on? So a word of knowledge could be something in the past or something in the present. It might be that I would come up to somebody and, and I just can't get it out of my heart. Well, wow, you just, you, you, to me, you really had, a, had an event in your life that just really, really kind of is holding you up from moving forward. And, I, and then I might explain that event. Does that seem right to you? And they're like, yeah, that happened to me. See, that, very natural, but it was a word of knowledge. Then, then you ask, well, Lord, then what do you want to do about that? Let's pray about it. Let's pray that that would just be unlocked. Now, I'm, I'm not functioning in a gift. Now, I'm just, my heart is there. Let's pray and undo that. But it was really a word of knowledge that prompted me to think that and move on that. It's a word of knowledge. It can be very natural. The Holy Spirit moves upon us for the common good of others. Now, lest we think, I could never do that, we do it all the time. Well, I just know the Packers are going to lose. I just know it. I got it in me, man. The Packers are, are going to win. Let's take it, turn it around. Packers are going to win. I can feel it. Why do you feel it? I just feel it. I just feel it. Or I'm going to go play that machine and, and you play it and then and you just, it was different this time. I knew I was going to win and you did. Now, I'm not saying that's the Holy Spirit, but it is spiritual and it is moving you forward and it can come to pass. We've had those experiences, but the Holy Spirit can do, use them for the common good. Are we okay in those two so far? And we'll move along. Word of knowledge. According to the same spirit, to another faith. The word faith there, really, it's faith, but it's special faith. To where I know that I know this is going to happen. I've had that happen on a number of occasions. It's a great thing. It, it, it's this move of God where if I pray for you, this will happen. There is not a doubt in me. I know it's going to happen. And then someone will say, wow, you really have great faith. No. To which I would say, we have a great Holy Spirit who gifted me faith for the moment, and it worked. Now, if I don't understand that, I'll think my faith always needs to be at that level. And it doesn't, and it can't. But as a, but as a manifestation of the Holy Spirit's presence, all of a sudden, I got faith. So don't ask. So when then people say, well, why do you think? Just say, I just got it. Let's just deploy with it. Don't, we don't have to like qualify it or disqualify it. Just move on it. But faith, great faith, is one. <clears throat> There's a number of occasions where I've gone up to somebody and said, it's a done deal, this is what's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, the Lord had me pray for you, and when I announced it, it was so settled in my heart, it is going to happen. And then it just happens. That, that's a gift that God gives us. And there's, again, we could get really, we could write, spend hours on each one, but we'll just move through it. I want you to recognize them so you know when they're going. To another, gifts of healing by one spirit. So, same spirit. Gifts, plural, of healing. So there are times that God brings healings and they ha happen. So I got two stories that I want to illustrate and I want to, want to point out something. One time I was in my living room and Linda had called and says, Hey, I, I want to come over. I just really believe that if you pray for me, I'll be healed. She had, she had, her ears were really hurting her. She goes, If you pray for my ears, I'll be healed. And I'm, think and I'm thinking, I don't feel that way. <laughs> But she did. So she comes over and she goes, and we, you know, small talk. That was my way of just buying time until I felt like I had it in me to pray for her. But she would have nothing, none of that. She goes, I think you need to pray for me. And I'm like, okay. So I put my hands up. And as soon as I put my hands up, it felt like car exhaust was coming out of both my hands. It was like just puffing out of my hands, both hands, as I put them up to her head. And she goes, oh, there it is. And she was totally healed. Now, that was a gift of healing and manifestation that really had nothing to do with me because I didn't work myself up into that. She was moved really by a moment of faith where she says, we put these things together, it'll happen. So God had two gifts working that came together and caused a manifestation to happen. So that was a gift of healing. And, and you, don't, you just position yourself 
for these gifts to work. You don't work it up in the sense that, well, as soon as I have a gift of healing, I'll go find somebody to use it on. It doesn't work like that. You find broken people, you have mood with compassion, you ask God, God, I earnestly desire, this is beyond my pay level right now, but I really want you to move in here and demonstrate and affirm your devotion for this person and bring just a manifestation of your spirit. We can comfort, we can have a word, we can have a gift of healing, but would you do that? And the Lord responds to that because it's for serving people forward. Um, another time, I'm just, I, I'm going to be a little cautious with this, but I'm just going to put this out there. There was a pastor, he was a friend of mine, I, I knew him, I knew him, I really liked him. I, he lived far away, so I didn't get to see him much. He was one of those guys where I just want to kind of walk near the guy and listen to him. Because he's going to say something really funny or really amazing. And I just want to just be close. He doesn't even have to know I'm there. He's one of those guys, really great guy. Well, he ended up getting two kinds of cancer. He got uh, leukemia, and then he got stomach cancer. <clears throat> and he wasn't doing very well. And he was battling it and doing the conventional medicine and, and all that. And it bought him some time, but he wasn't doing that well. And we were at a big meeting. And a guy who was speaking had a word and said, the Lord, the Lord wants to heal you of your cancer. And the guy went up and he felt a release into this man's body. And he was immediately healed of stomach cancer. Like immediately. And died two months later of leukemia. Right? So, so we're like, so now that just gets in your head, doesn't it? You're like, well, now why would God, here's, here's what I want to propose to you and me. Now, Jesus, that would not have happened to him. Because he was the fullness of deity was in his body. And Jesus met people oftentimes with multiple gifts of the Spirit working. So raising someone from the dead is a working of miracles because it's a miracle it's a gift of healing because they died from something so sick, and it's probably a work of, of that special faith because it takes great faith to raise someone from the dead. So in raising someone from the dead, three gifts come together for an event to happen. If we're going to be the fullness of Christ, it's probably unlikely that I'm bringing three gifts into a situation. But three of us could bring three gifts into a situation. So oftentimes what God needs to get done doesn't because we aren't walking in unity and expressing the fullness of Christ. So one person brought a... Now I'm not saying that it has to be this way. I'm just proposing the idea. If, if he's growing us up together to come together in the unity of the faith to be assembled and mended and be ready so that we can be the full measure of the stature of Christ, then I'm not doing it on my own. I'm going to need to walk in concert with one another. And when I bring my gift into a situation and someone else brings their gift into a situation, I think something could happen. And here's what I suspect. I'm not being harsh. I'm just suspecting it. That, that we're so gun-shy that a spectator mode, we have, we have deemed that appropriate when in fact it isn't. And the casualties of what happens is we haven't brought my portion and the Holy Spirit working through me to bring enough of what God wants to do to get the job 100% done all the time. Sometimes he does do that. And sometimes he has put those gifts in multiple fashion upon a guy where one guy will move out on stage and have tremendous things happen. So you got a room full of 1,000 people and 150 people get healed. That's amazing. And 350 people go home sick. And it's because we have set up a format where we got one guy on the platform. And we're leaving half, 500 people to be healed by this one guy. And the Lord is saying, I've divided my resources over the body of Christ. But because you have allowed one guy to be, have the spotlight on him, I'm limited in what I can do. Because it's not the body agrees that the fullness of the stature of Christ is in that pastor. The body agrees that it's in them. And, and what we're starting to see now is less pulpit shining and more enfranchising coming into the body. So turn to your neighbor and pray for them and speak the word of God over their lives. And the Holy Spirit, expect him to meet you. And we could possibly get 100% 
healings. And I believe before the Lord returns, as we make ourselves ready, we will see the full measure of the statue of Christ working in the body to do 100% of what God wants to do. That's where he's taking us. And that we have to be willing that I carry my load. I carry my portion. And it's not, great, now i got to go to the Lord and get it. No, I, he says, I don't want you to be unaware of what you have. These are the things that are working. If you know them, you can then partner with God. And you exercise yourself. First time, you know, first time I prayed. First time I went and spoke. I was asked in Bible college to speak. Um, a guy had a church. He was also a student. He, was a, he owned three businesses, was planting a church, and was a student in our institute. So, I mean, this guy just didn't let a lot of grass grow under his feet. And he asked me, he goes, I really like what you're saying. I really want you to come and speak at my church. And I go, what do you want to talk on? He goes, well, I want you to talk on healing. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So I agreed to it. I was so sick. I had green pus just flowing out of my nose. I couldn't hear. My eyes were pussing, watering. I mean, it was like, seriously, this is my first time I'm ever going to speak. The guy asked me to speak on healing. And I am so contagious, I wouldn't get near me for nothing. And I thought, Lord, what do I do? And he's like, truth is truth. It's not about you. Just proclaim the truth. And I'm like, okay. So I did, and God did some things. It was pretty cool, and the pastor was, didn't ask me back. But <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but I, I, when I looked at that man that we all loved, Everybody was comfortable letting one guy do 100% of the ministry, and we came up short. And I believe the gift was in the room, but never got played. I believe it. Gift's in the room here. If we play it, well, I, no, we just, he says, uh, let's just become aware. Let's become informed. It's there. Continuing on real quick. Gifts of healing to another working of miracles. <clears throat> miracles, uh, uh, Zach's arm growing out was a working of miracle. He wasn't sick. He was going to live a long life, but God did something that grew his arm out. He added molecular structure out of the invisible into the visible, and his arm grew out. That was a miracle. There's many different kinds of miracles, but that was a miracle. And it wasn't pre-planned. Didn't, someone didn't come to the meeting and say, I got a miracle in my pocket. Who am I going to play it on? It was just the, the time came, the Holy Spirit moved, it happened. Cool. That's work. And it, a lot of people, any kind of injuries, it needs, it needs a restoration. It doesn't need to be healed. It needs to be creatively restored. That can be a miracle. Same Holy Spirit, Paul makes the comment. There's not nine gods out there. One's the God of wisdom. One's the God of knowledge. One's the God of miracles. It's one Holy Spirit working in whomever he chooses, whoever is in position, and he's choosing us that they will move in that works. To another is prophecy. So per, speaking forth, prophecy is edification, exhortation, or comfort. It could be a word of wisdom. It could be a word of knowledge because it's a word and you might speak it forth, but it will come as comfort, edification, and exhortation. Prophecy. To, an, to another, um, the ability to distinguish between spirits. I'll come back to that. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. So uh, this is talking about a public ministry for the common good to advance people forward. That is a message in tongues. Privately praying in tongues is another message, is another way of exercising tongues. So for instance, I have faith, but then the Holy Spirit can come on me with the gift of faith, and I use it. I can pray in tongues but the Holy Spirit can come on me with the gift of tongues. And then that gift needs to be interpreted. And there's somebody in the room to interpret. So, uh, and then tongues and interpretation is akin to prophecy. It speaks edification, exhortation, or comfort. It's just the Holy Spirit dividing it up in two different ways to demonstrate himself differently in that setting. And we probably are more comfortable with that. Now I want to talk about discerning of spirits. It is not discernment. Discernment is a good thing. Everybody can learn by studying the scriptures, being sensitive, being built up in your holy faith, and when someone's lying to you, you just know you're lying to me. That's discernment, and everybody can develop discernment. 
But discernment or discerning of spirits is discerning the, the spirit behind what's going on. There's angelic spirits, there's evil spirits, there's human spirits. God's a spirit. And I discern a spirit. And oftentimes you discern them with physical attributes. I have smelled bad spirits. I can tell when they're in the room. Something's not going right. I don't always know because I know I've had evil spirits around me and I couldn't smell anything. But God has oftentimes opened my nose to smell bad spirits. That is not necessarily a faculty you want to be using. They, are, they, they smell really bad. Like worse than driving past a, a farm that just spread you know, hog manure out in the field. Way worse than that. It's just got this death, stink, smell to it. There was a time when Kim and I were uh, together uh, out of town and we're staying at someone's house and some rough stuff happened and we just prayed and asked the Lord to bless, comfort us and the whole room smelled with, all I can say is the fragrance of heaven. It, it, was, it was unbelievable how wonderful it smelled. You just want to... It was just, wow, I just... What, what is that, you know? Oh, it's so good. And it lasted all night long. Just the Lord's blessing. It was just so comforting and so nice. And it was, it was the Holy Spirit's presence. We discerned it with our nose. He was there ministering to us. There's a, I've heard the voice of a demon that nobody else heard with my ears. I heard it speak. I'm like, do you hear that? I didn't hear anything. I heard that. And it, it spoke. It was a challenge. And I said, Lord, what do we do about that? He goes, you answer that challenge with the truth. And so I just spoke, and it took care of that. But I heard it. It, it now it could have come as a word of knowledge, but it didn't. It came, I, I heard it. That was discerning that spirit with my natural ears. Eyes, seeing spirits. Um, and just, just the Lord, um, you, just, you know that what the spirit is. I was doing some exercise in my basement one time and I and I sat up and I was absolute I just I knew that I knew that I knew there was an angel standing right there and he was looking at me and I'm like I mean I'm you know I'm in my gym shorts and I'm just like I, I don't wow I don't know what to do I just was like it was just so weird it's kind of weird thinking about it right now and I'm like so so then I'm thinking, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to do. So I said, if, if you have something you want to share with me, share it with me. And then I didn't get anything. Then I'm like, well, whatever you're here to do, if it's for God, go do it. And then I just felt like that thing just took off. Choom, gone. And I'm like, wow. I don't know why that thing needed me to, that thing, the angel needed me, <laughs> needed me to commission it, but it did. And so I had a discernment that there was an angel right there, and then the Lord gave me information, a word, commission it. So I did, and it did. I don't know what happened with that. And there's all other ways and other things that are going on. I'm in my gym shorts exercising, and a spiritual moment happens. I wasn't fasting. I wasn't praying. I was probably actually not enjoying the moment very much. And thinking, why am I getting older and having to do this? When I was young, it was just eat and lose weight or something. Why is it like that? <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, there's a moment here. That is how the, the Holy Spirit, we can ask him for that. Lord, we're asking that these gifts would come into manifestation, that you would coach us and guide us. But Lord, the most reason we want this in every level is because you said it's for the common good of bringing people into the fullness of our calling. And we want to move along as quickly as we can. So would you release the equipping that you've made available to us by your Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, to work in us so that people can be mended, people can be healed, encouraged, move along. And I know he'll do that. And so when you recognize that, if you have a thought going through your mind, it's probably the Lord.